It's time for Friday Night Lights, sponsored by McDonald's of Hampton Roads and Northeast North Carolina, Casey Auto Group, and Rose and Wampo Realty. After weeks of summer practice and scorching heat, 10 weeks of regular season games, the season comes to an end for local high school football teams, except for those that advance towards the ultimate goal of winning a state championship. Which teams are in and which teams are out? And was a historic milestone reached tonight? Or did we see one of the biggest upsets in decades? It's the exciting season finale of Friday Night Flights. I'm Bruce Rader. You know, Oscar Smith has been one of the nation's top teams for many years. Tonight, the Tigers looking for their 100th straight Southeastern Conference win. Their opponent, Red Hot Kings for Chris Reckling, was there at this historic game. Bruce, I've been to a lot of high school football games. I've never seen one as good as the game I saw tonight. It was the most hyped up game of the season and lived up to that hype. In fact, it ended up being a game Hampton Roads fans won't soon forget. Let's go to Kings Fork. It was played on senior night under a full moon. Two teams having great seasons. Kings Fork looking to make a statement while Oscar Smith looking to add to its legacy as one of the best high school football programs in 757 history. It was 2-0 the first. Let's go to the fourth. It turned out to be a seesaw battle. Darren Buttons takes it over for Kings Fork. Gives the Bulldogs a 21-16 lead. But on fourth and long, Kenny Etheridge somehow escapes and he fires it downfield to a wide open Brandon Brock. That's a 56 yard score and just wow. like that, Oscar Smith back on top. Under a minute to play, Kings Fork did not give up. That's Justin German over the middle to Sherrod Joe. Sherrod Joe cuts to his right and Sherrod Joe is gonna find the end zone to give Kings Fork the lead. Kings Fork with a huge 29-23 win to snap Oscar Smith's 99 conference win streak. There. Do what I was supposed to do and go get the ball and, and get a big win for the team. We needed this one. Talk about the emotions in that game. Man, just going in, we was turned, we was straight, like we was going for 99 one. It's not it's not the fact that it was Oscar Smith, but it's they it was on their streak, and it's Oscar Smith. And, and we're in Suffolk. They don't expect Suffolk to have ballers. And for us to come out here and just win on our senior night, on our senior night, I'm a senior, all of a good majority of us seniors. And we said we got to get it done. We've been close and close and close. And today we finally got through there. It, it just means the world to us because every day that we, we struggled and couldn't get through the practice, this means everything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what an emotional game. Thanks, Chris Reckley. Meanwhile, at the Beach Town, the top seed in Class 6, looking to finish their regular season unbeaten against Cox, the defending Beach District champions. Eagles up 14-6. That is Cox's Travion Robinson. What a year he's having. Scrambling downfield to tie the game at 14-all. But this night, a champion would be crowned. Lansdowne's outstanding quarterback, Brent Stooks, scrambles and finds a wide open Jalen Jennings for the go-ahead score. Cox regains the lead until late in the game when Brett Stooks makes magic again. Brent with this beautiful pass to Joe White for the game-winning touchdown. Lands it. Lanstown wins it by 10, finishes the year 10-0, and will be the first seed in the 18 Class 6 playoffs. Lanstown also getting a first-round buy. And hey, if you were at that Cox-Lanstown game, you probably saw this guy. Andy Fox joins us tonight for his annual appearance on Friday Night Flight. Let me, do you see those highlights? It's unbelievable, Bruce. What a night, what a game, what a everything tonight. Tonight's word, synergy. When agents combine to produce something greater than the sum of their parts, and that was Cox High School tonight. Tonight, under a supermoon and a king tide, when the earth, moon, and sun are aligned, and in the house, the Cox Coquettes. <laughs> Synergy alive and well in Falcon Country. How many people are here for the Falcon? <laughs> Am I in the student section? Yeah! yeah. C O S! <laughs> <laughs> 
Milwaukee. Everyone comes out to the football Wouldn't games. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cox, go fight, win. Synergy living in 2009 Cox grad and World Series standout Chris Taylor hit the first pitch home run, co-MVP of the National League Championship. He went to Cox with current Cox baseball coach Matt Itner, class of 2008. Chris is just an incredible person, first off. I mean, he's so genuine to all of our guys in our program. What were his overall impressions of being in the World Series? He just said it was an overall incredible experience. He wouldn't trade it for anything, and I know he wanted to get the job done, and there's no doubt that he would definitely get the, he'll get the job done here in the next couple years. Cox principal Mike Kelly talks about Chris Taylor and his resilience to succeed. I talk to the kids about resilience all the time. You know, last year he was in the minors. This year he's hitting a leadoff home run in the World Series. I mean, that's resilience for you, and that's what we try and teach the kids. Ready, one, two. Synergy seen in the Cox Varsity cheerleaders. How's it going in there? Oh, we got to get you in here. So, uh, what? How hot is it in there? Real hot. Are you, gonna, are you feeling faint? And what would a Cox High School football night be without Buck, the Cox mascot? Right, now we head back to Chesapeake for another Southeastern District game to end the season. It's been a season of highs and lows at Indian River. They were either stomping their opponents or getting blown out themselves. Ah, uh, but Andy, the Brave season finale against Western Branch is always one of the best games of the season. Tonight, no exception. Senior night at Western Branch, and the Bruins start strong as Jay Bon Sparrow fights his way in for the first score of the game. Indian River returns the favor when Carmelo Sweat breaks open into the field, and he will take it through the back of the end zone, and that will tie the game at seven. Western Branch will answer. How about Stero? Well, he's the power runner again, up the gut for the score. And what about the fans? Hey, they'll show their joy by doing a few push-ups to keep the team going. Western Branch increases their lead. Quarterback Mark Dyer with the keeper gets just inside the pylon to give the Bruins a 14-point advantage, but not so fast. Here comes Indian River. Nashawn Overton in for the score to keep it close. And then Devin Campbell with the dagger as Indian Whip River wins on the road 28 to 21. What great highlights in Hampton. What a year for unbeaten Phoebus, the top seed in class three. And as expected, the Phantoms would run away with their season finale against Menchville as they have most of the year. Phoebus quarterback Chris Daniels. Watch this. Throws an easy touchdown to wide out Barry Hargrave to extend their lead. Look at that. Juan Purdue takes it up the middle for the touchdown to give Phoebus a commanding lead. Coming up right here. And Jalen White takes it to the house. Phoebus finishes the year 10-0. Look at that, right up there in the middle. 10-0 wins the Peninsula District title and the top seed in the playoffs and look to be the favorite to win the state championship. A 69 to nothing win. There he is, another touchdown. First Colonial knocks off Kempsville 21-14. Kellum needed overtime to beat Princess Anne 36 to 35. And Nansman River beat up on Grassfield 34 to seven. Deep Creek chops down Hickory 41 to seven. And Lakeland is heading to the playoffs as they beat Great Bridge 45 to nothing. Great Bridge goes 0 and 10 this year. As always, you can check the scores of all the games in the area on wavy.com. And when we come back, we're gonna take you to York for a Bay Rivers District showdown. Could Pocosin bounce back after a tough shutout loss at home? And we head back to the beach. Four more teams were in action to end their seasons, including a showdown between Bayside and Tallwood. Don't go away. Bruce and Andy will be right back with more Friday Night Flights. The sweet sounds of the Western Branch High School Marching Band, our Friday Night Flights Band of the Week. You know, it's been a tough go recently for the Pocosin Islanders. They started the season with six straight wins. However, they've been shut out twice at home since then, including a tough loss uh, last week 
against Lafayette. Absolutely right. Tonight, they look to finish the regular season strong against a tough York team. Let me take you there in Yorktown. Pocosin and White with the ball early in the first quarter. When running back Robert Hennessy, here he is, stripped by Josh Martinez of York, who also recovers the fumble, giving York the ball. But then running back John Cassidy right here is stuffed in his own end zone. Look at that. For the safety. Gets two points. But York. One of the top teams in class three would own the game. John Cassidy with a pretty pass to Trey Cartwright, who picks up a nice game now. Now, look, what a catch. Now in the second quarter, York still with the ball. When quarterback Cole Edwards, coming up here, right here, keeps it and takes it to the house. Busted down the door. York ends up taking this one 22. All right, Andy, back to the beach where Bayside and Tallwood and Western Branch all in the hunt for one of the final Division Six playoff spots. And who says special teams don't win football games? Bayside's Malik Johnson is going to field this punt, find an opening, and return it 50 yards down the sideline for the touchdown. That touchdown scored before the Marlins offense even took the field. The Bayside defense also coming up with a key block on a Tallwood field goal on special teams and Bayside finishes their season with a 13 to 6 win, securing their spot in the playoffs. Now on to Norfolk as Granby and Mari square off in their annual rivalry game. Granby looking to lock up a spot in the playoffs with a win. Mari though strips first. Strikes first with a short TD run from CJ Beasley after a long drive. The Cavaliers take the early lead. Granby will strike back the same way. Quarterback Shavea Williams with the draw for the score. Granby leads 7-6. to six. And then towards the end of the quarter, Mari got that passing game going. Quarterback Bam Mills with a bomb to the end zone. Drops right into the hands of Keandre Lambert. And as we move on, the same score. Mills will dump it off to Beasley. He makes a guy miss, uses that speed to dive into the end zone as Granby tries to come back in the second half, but Mari pulls it out 26 to 21 and heads to the playoffs. Three touchdown passes for Christian Randolph as Norfolk Academy beats St. Anne's Belfield from Charlottesville. Nansman Suffolk beat Hampton Rose Academy 55-13. All right, and Portsmouth Christian takes down Atlantic Shores 42 to 18, and Greenbrier Christian able to hold on to beat Shickleton. Kings Fork upsets Ocean Lakes. Chris Reckling. Oscar that... Smith, you, you brought me out of retirement. I want to thank you for that because in all my years, it was one of the greatest football games I've ever seen in Hampton Roads. That's right. It was it was Cox Oscar was Smith, too. Andy Fox. Thanks Cox, for being with Cox me. Cox was great too. Cox is great. Have a great weekend, everybody. Great season, everybody.